What's up guys, in this video I want to talk about the different options and ways of powering your Blackmagic Packet Cinema Camera 4K. If you guys already had experience working with this camera, you'll know that uh, the battery life uh, is not horrible, but it's not the, not the best either. Uh, it's, you know, it's about 40 minutes you'll get uh, using the, the sort of small Canon batteries that are uh, that you can put inside the camera. So if you're one of those who really just doesn't want to deal with changing the batteries every 40 minutes, uh, then you can obviously power it in different ways. In the review uh, that I did of the camera itself, I showed how uh, you can connect the dummy battery and then using a DC cable, you can plug that in uh, to different, different ways. But then that means that you have to either drill a hole like I did here in the bottom, uh, basically door compartment for the batteries, or you got to remove that door uh, from there. There's actually, I think, another better way of doing this. And it all starts basically by taking the original power AC cable that you get, which is uh, this little AC adapter you get with the camera and this sort of 12 two pin Limo connection. Uh, and basically just take it and cut this cable in half. The reason why I did this is because uh, it's kind of difficult right now. As far as I know, I think only Black Magical sales a cable uh, basically that has the, the, the right kind of connection here for the, 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 the for, for the power basically plug here on the side of the camera. So if you don't want to overpay basically for each time for getting a cable like this uh, or also you just maybe it's difficult for you to get it because I know they're kind of back ordered even with some of the cables then uh, you can make a you know, kind of a custom cable for yourself and the way that I did it is like I said I chopped this off and there on the other end I just basically soldered here uh, a standard sort of a DC connection. So once you cut your AC power cable in half, uh, then take your uh, your plug basically that goes into the camera uh, and uh, and just attach the male end of the DC plug. Obviously, you'll need to know how to solder. It's not a hard thing to learn. There's a lot of YouTube videos already online, uh, so you can definitely learn to do that really quickly. And you'll obviously need to get some soldering tool. The one that I got also on Amazon is very affordable. And then just keep in mind that once you cut the AC cable from the camera, uh, there's going to be two basically wires coming out. One is just a sort of this bare wire. Uh, and then the other one is enclosed in this white uh, plastic. So the white wire is actually the positive wire. The other one's the negative. And obviously when you're attaching that to your DC plug, uh, then the red is the plus, the black is the negative. Once you solder that in, then like I said, you have this nice little, sort of little cable up here that you can plug in here to the side of the camera. And now once you have this plugged in, then suddenly you can uh, plug this into a lot of different options because this is again, just a standard DC connection. Now, if you did still wanna use it with your original AC adapter, you can definitely do that. Just simply then on the other end of the cable, basically, that goes from your AC adapter, just attach uh, the DC female connection. And then, again, you can plug this here and you can still use your original AC adapter. Now, obviously, you want to probably plug this into something that's a bit, little bit more portable. So uh, what are some of the options that I found? One is this 12-volt uh, battery. I again, I got this on Amazon. There's another one from the same company that's just half the size. Uh, and have the, the capacity, obviously, of power. This one is 6,000 milliamps and will power the camera for around three hours, give and take. Uh, and it's very simple. You just plug this into here, turn on your battery, and then turn on the camera. Now, keep in mind that, obviously, you'll want to have a way to mount this somehow. So uh, there's a lot of different ways that you can mount it. If you have a cage like I do, then you can uh, just even mount it right directly to the cage by using, let's see, Velcro belt. Or, for example, you can put those kind of a sticky kind of glue on Velcro pads here. Another one, let's say, here on the cage uh, on the top or on the side. And you can just kind of have it attached like this and you can kind of run and gun with, with, with it this way. If you get, obviously, the smaller battery, the one that's half the size of this, it will make it even easier then to mount it again to the top or to the side of the cage. Now, if you want to power the camera for even longer, then you can get this ginormous battery that I got here, which even has a, a AC connection. And there's actually various USB connections and also the various DC connections with one is 19 uh, volts, for example, four amps. And then here you have 12 volts, five amps. Uh, something actually to keep in mind, Whenever you're going to be plugging this in, you want to make sure that you're providing at least 
12 volt and two and a half amps minimum. Another thing you can obviously power this camera now with is uh, any standard uh, V mount battery or you know uh, Anton power batteries. You just want to make sure that your battery has an extra power connection. And most of these VMOD batteries these days come with an extra PTAP connector on, on the side. And for that, I bought this simple cable, uh, which has, again, PTAP plug on one end and a DC connection on the other. And this happens to be a male, and our little cable that I made here is also a male. So how do you connect it? Well, you can, again, make your own cable using these spare DC, basically, plugs uh, that you buy. And just basically make sure that they're both female on both ends. And then you can kind of use that as an adapter. Or if you really wanted to, then you can just cut off this uh, cable here that goes to your uh, PTAP plug and just, again, mount to this the female connection. Now with this, you can obviously plug it into the, the battery here. And again, we can power the camera. As you can see, it is working beautifully. Now, what if you want to power your camera while it's flying on a gimbal? Uh, again, using this do-it-yourself cable, you can power it because most gimbals these days, like for example here, I have the Mozo Air 2. As you'll notice here on the front, they actually have a 12 volt uh, connection. So again, you can plug this in here and we can turn on the camera just to show you that it works. And as you can see again, it works, powers the, the camera beautifully. So that makes it a lot easier now, again, to kind of fly your camera on a gimbal longer. Now, if you're using another gimbal, then again, most gimbals will have a power connection there. Uh, and it just depends what plug they have. They usually will have this DC or PTAP connection. So if that's PTAP, then again, you get that PTAP cable uh, that I used to plug this into the V-mount battery. Now, if you want to put your camera on a bigger setup, like the shoulder rig that I have up here, then uh, the best thing I think is to just get a V-mount battery plate like the one up here I have from JTZ I think is a, is a great plate. You can get obviously cheaper ones that don't have all these fancy options but what I like about this plate is that it uh, has actually a DC connection a plug and in this case we just take our do-it-yourself plug plug it into the V-mount battery plate and again we can power the camera and with this kind of setup you're ready to rock and roll and you can shoot all day. Now, how long can you expect to power this camera from a V-mount battery? Again, it really depends on the size of the V-mount battery. The one I have up here is 98 watt hours. And in this case, uh, again, give and take, you can get sometimes six hours, sometimes even more than six hours. So if you get two of these batteries, then you're definitely gonna be ready for a whole day of shooting. Now, what about powering this camera using uh, the USB connection here uh, on the side? Well, I don't know whether it's something to do with my camera or what, but I have not been able to get this to work. I've tried various of these portable battery banks, like this smaller one, and even this giant one, which actually has really powerful connections here, has, for example, 5, 9, and even a 12 volt out quick uh, charge uh, USB connection. And none of these were able to actually power the camera. As you can see, the camera is not turning on. Now my USB Type-C connection does work because I'm able to actually plug in an external hard drive and record to that. But for some reason, I cannot power the camera. So uh, again, I don't know what it could be. I've tried different cables, different batteries, and again, none of that worked. Now, to be honest with you guys, I myself, at the end of the day, I just prefer using these little batteries. Uh, why? Because again, one of the coolest things about this Blackmagic Packet Cinema 4K camera is the fact that even though maybe it doesn't quite fit in your pocket, it's it's still the smallest cinema camera out there. So I like to keep it small. I don't want to kind of build it up and make this big uh, thing unless I really have to. So if I'm not going to make this into a big rig, and most of the time, like I said, I'm not. I like to kind of have it in this sort of a nice small form factor. Maybe I'll attach this little grip uh, that comes with this Kim TV cage. But that's about it. So in this case, I really do prefer to power this camera using these Canon uh, LPE6 batteries. Uh, the ones that I trust the most are obviously the original Canon ones work well, but also these Wasabi ones and also Watson is another brand uh, that I've had good, you know, good luck using them with this camera. And yes, you only get 40 minutes per battery, but you know what? It's not the end of the world, guys. 40 minutes, just change out the battery. You can still keep on shooting for 40 minutes without a problem. If you, you know, keep on shutting down the camera between takes, you can obviously uh, make that last a bit longer and uh, I guess maybe, I don't know, call me old school, back in the day when I used to actually shoot on film. Depends on how big of a film magazine, how you know, how many feet of film you have in there, but it could go, you know, as little as five minutes 
to sometimes you know the bigger film magazines will maybe give you uh, 11 12 minutes so every 11 12 minutes at, at its best you'd have to stop take out the film magazine you know clean the film gate you know respool the the film pull it through the the camera's gate all that stuff and then you could you could go again so it was definitely a lot more of a pain in the ass than you know these days i think we're just getting spoiled all it really takes is just here pop out the battery grab another one put it in there and that's it you're ready to go it really doesn't take that long so yes there's lots of different ways that you can power the black magic packet cinema 4k camera but I think for me, I'm just going to stick with the little Canon LPE6 batteries. If you guys like this video, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to my newsletter so you're notified of future videos like this and other ones. Also, I want to give a big shout out and thank you to all my patrons for making this video possible. If you want early access to all of the videos up here, plus a whole bunch of other videos that are only exclusively for my patrons, then uh, consider joining as a patron at patreon.com slash Tom Antos. That's it for this video, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.